Embrace the journey of life, knowing with God all things are possible. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Thank you for joining us today in spite of the drizzly weather. And I ask that you please join with me in our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Please rise as you are able, and I ask that you remain standing for the prayer of invocation, followed by all praying the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, in whom we live, move, and have being, as we gather here to worship today at the altar within our heart, may it be with an open mind and attitude of gratitude that we may step more fully into the bounty of the universe and the attributes of who we truly are, that we may manifest the changes in the world around us and our personal lives that we truly desire to experience, creating a place of peace and harmony for all souls everywhere, that they too may step into that place of joy and comfort within, knowing that all of our needs are provided and that we must simply take the responsibility for choice and to open ourselves to be receptive to the divine healing energy that allows us to see more clearly the path to accepting and creating all that we desire to see and be. Let us affirm that prayer by praying the prayer that the Master Teacher Jesus taught the original disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. Our lecture today is titled, God's Will is Our Destiny. And the scripture comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Word was in the beginning, and that very Word was with God. And God was that Word. The same was in the beginning with God. Everything came to be by his hand, and without him not even one thing that was created came to be. May Spirit bless the reading of the scripture. God's will is our destiny, but the path we take to arrive at our destiny is a creation of our free will. At a time in the world when there is so much hopelessness, poverty, injustice, and threats of menacing countries, the celebration of the birth of Christ's consciousness is our hope of glory. Manifesting the Christ within is our mission, and that is why we are choosing to work with our spiritual guides and teachers to teach all who have ears to hear our eyes to see, that we can make a difference in our personal lives and in worldly affairs. As we celebrate the awareness of the Christ consciousness in all souls everywhere, we celebrate the birth of Jesus the Christ, who tells us in John chapter 14, verse 12, greater things than I have done, you shall do also. We interpret this to mean that we too are begotten only of God and have things to do. We need to be the changes that we desire to see in the world, not to expect someone else to create our dreams as our reality. How many times do we hear people say, I don't have the experience. I am not qualified to do this or that, whatever the challenge may be in the moment. But guess what? God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And that includes you and I. We are continually being called to move into higher levels of consciousness to shift our mind. 
which is the builder or the creator of the circumstances in our individual lives. Where we allow our individual minds to go, our reality follows, be it physically, mentally, or spiritually. There is not one of us that has not got off track. We've all made mistakes. We've backslid into that place where souls get lost. Lines get crossed and the pain just doesn't seem to go away. It is what is known as the dark night of the soul or the Job experience, where we wrestle with an unclean spirit, a lesser desirable attribute of self. It's easy to find ourselves back in Egypt, the realm of substance and life and the depths of body consciousness the unregenerated soul. It is a land of darkness. It is a land of mystery. Egypt signifies the darkness of ignorance, obscurity. Yet, it has a special place in the body consciousness and is often thought of as referring to the objective or subconscious mind, which keeps reoccurring until we resolve all those things. Egypt is also referenced to as flesh, sense, our material consciousness. This hidden realm within our organism is an obscure state to which most of us, but yet it is a great kingdom. Although its king is Pharaoh, ruler of the sun, are the brain and nerve center, which psychologists have correctly named the solar plexus and its function or purpose is to direct the circulatory system the digestion the assimilation so forth and so on students of mind have discovered that the solar plexus is but the organ through which a ruling thought acts and this ruling thought is typified by the pharaoh the one of hard heart who won't let his people go However, we should not forget that it is down in Egypt that we find the grain, our substance required to sustain man, the physical, making ready the storehouse and filling them with the vitality that will be needed when the outer man has exhausted his resources. <coughs> we cannot have that joyous reunion of mind and body with all its brothers our faculties as set forth in Genesis chapters 42 through 46 unless we are willing to let higher thought go consciously down into Egypt and rule there second to Pharaoh himself the various plagues brought upon the Egyptians by the Lord through Moses are symbolic representations of what occurs in this part of the human organism when the presiding intelligence pharaoh opposes the influx of higher consciousness into the physical life a large number of various diseases of the bowels kidney and other organs of the body are the result of mental resistance to spiritual consciousness which is working widely in humanity to bring us into the realization that spiritual man, the true ego, is the only rightful heir to the divine inheritance, spiritual consciousness. We as individuals must awake from the dream of mortality, flesh consciousness forever and cross the Red Sea, the boundary line where we sacrifice, consciously give up every tie that binds us to the past, to go through the wilderness, a transitionary state, and then through the waters of Jordan, the boundary line between the transitional and the permanent. Water in its different aspects represents weakness, negativeness, cleansing, mental potentiality, and in some cases it, it actually represents life or the vital energy of life. 
the waters of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, represent unexpressed potentialities in the mind. There must be a firm starting point established. This point or firmament is a faith moving on the unformed capacities of spirit consciousness, which is embodied within each one of us from the very beginning. In every mental proposition, we have an above and a below. Above the firmament are the unexpressed waters of the conscious mind, resting in faith and divine mind. Below the firmament are the unexpressed capacities waters of the subconscious mind. The seas of Genesis chapter 1 verse 10 represents the unformed states of mind. We say that a man is at sea when he is in doubt about a mental process. In other words, he has not established his thoughts in line with the principle that is involved. Therefore, that one is unstable. The sea is capable of production, but must come under the dominion of the formative power of mind to give it the stability to produce. Water, as the sea in Mark 6, verses 47 through 51, represents mental potentiality. It can also be understood as negation. The race thoughts that have formed as a sea of thought, and to walk over it simply requires that one have faith and oneself. Faith necessary to accomplish such a great work comes from understanding, understanding of God and of man, and the law of mastery given to mankind from the very beginning that was recorded in our hearts and minds before we ever became physical. God is substance, the underlying principle of the universe, upholding all things by his word of power, by the omnipresent energy that permeates all creation. Understanding the true character of the creative source establishes the mind firmly in faith and causes the feet to walk safely over the sea of mixed negative thoughts of the individual or of the race of people. It is not necessary to walk on the water physically, but to follow Jesus the Christ in thought. His walking on the water is a blessing in spiritual overcoming. When we have found the spirit of the law, the material expression, will adjust itself. We will see the light and the truth within our own being. We live constantly in a sea of thought that is moved on by every impulse of the mind. The majority of people try to sail the ocean of life without the sustaining power of spirit. But eventually, they always go down in a troubled sea. Even those who have been taught of the masters are still filled with doubts and fears when storms arise. And instead of a reality, they see an apparition. But the Christ mind is not an apparition. It is a mighty power. And when we have faith in it, all the discordant elements of life are quiet. We become calm within and we reduce we reduce to harmony and wholeness everything that our peace-giving thoughts touch. But the individual who allows him or herself to become negative to one's good finds oneself uncertain and unstable in mind. And often the body becomes so submerged in the waters of negation that the physical condition becomes lower. We become weak and unhealthy. It behooves us to know that God is our Father and chooses to instruct and discipline us in righteousness. This is how the call become qualified. On a personal level, I can tell you that God has been very busy with me this past week. 
I have received a lot of discipline and instruction. I don't know what I am being qualified for, but due to the work, it must be something great. Those who will not learn their lessons in easy ways will, will have to learn them in hard ways. And we should not be fundamentally sympathetic with those who make severe correction necessary. That does not mean that we shouldn't give them guidance, but we don't take it personal and make it our mission. There is an old adage that says an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And an old farmer's advice just might help find that ounce of prevention. When asked, an old, any old farmer will tell you that your fences need to be horse high, pig tight, and bull strong. And you'd better watch where you're stepping. Life ain't about how fast you run or how high you climb, but how well you bounce. Keep skunks, bankers, and lawyers at a distance. Life is simpler when you plow around the stump and the bumblebee is considerably faster than any John Deere tractor. Words that soak into your ears are always whispered, not yelled. Meanness don't just happen overnight. Forgive your enemies if for no other reason it messes up their heads. It makes them think. Do not corner something that you know is meaner than you. It doesn't take a very big person to carry a grudge. You cannot unsay a cruel word. And we should know that every path has a few puddles. When you wallow with pigs, expect to get up dirty. The best sermons are lived, not preached. Most of the things people worry about aren't ever gonna happen anyway. And we should never judge a person by their relatives. Remember that silence is sometimes the best answer. Live a good, honorable life. Then when you get older and think back, you can enjoy it a second time. Don't interfere with something, with something that ain't bothering you none. Timing has a lot to do with the outcome of a rain dance. And the easiest way for any of us to eat our share of crow is to eat it while it is still warm. Because the colder it gets, the harder it is to swallow. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. It don't take a genius to spot a goat and a flock of sheep. Sometimes you get and sometimes you get got. The biggest troublemaker you'll ever have to deal with watches you from your mirror every morning. Good judgment comes from experience, and a lot of that truly comes from bad judgment. If you get to thinking you're a person of some influence, just try bossing someone else's dog around. Live simply, love generously, care deeply, Always speak kindly and leave the rest to God because he has thought it through far better than we ever will. Don't you think that's very simply stated? It's very simple, but you're very truthful. However, it brings us back to the point that before we can peacefully settle down in the promised land, our divine inheritance, truth becomes an active, irresistible power in all areas of our individual lives and we know that the task of, that is ahead of us is never as great as the power that is behind us spiritually awakened we become the possessor of the divine germ the word of truth and we begin at once to make use of it the result is an influx of light as mortality begins to fade from one's conscious thought. As light increases, mortality decreases until, as Paul said, mortality is swallowed up in immortality. As those that will take freely of the living waters of life, experiencing God's will, 
The Creator desires for us to live life fully through the creative power within us under the guidance of natural law, the laws that were recorded in our hearts and minds from that very beginning, before we ever had our first physical incarnation. A union of the I am, spiritual thought, with the living water of life, which is stored in the six nerve centers of the human organism, generates an abundance of vital energy. With every thought, we are setting this nerve fluid into a state of action, and it rushes to the part of our body to which our thought, our attention draws it. And in the same energy that we sent forth that thought, that word, or that action. It is the Lord that responds under the divine law to our thoughts and to our words and our actions that leads us into that place within all, our own being where we say, here I am, Lord. I will go where you lead me as I hold your people in my heart. Bless you.